So now we're going to talk a little bit about bacterial genetics, um, how they get their genetic material, and how they transfer it. So the first thing I want to talk about is transformation. Um, and it's kind of a weird term, um, but basically it's where um, DNA in the environment um, from like a lysed cell or another bacteria or something uh, attaches onto a bacterium, uh, gets engulfed, and gets incorporated into the bacterium's own DNA. Um, and basically, uh, the things, the bacteria that use this the most are shin. So, strep pneumonia, haemophilus influenza, and neisseria. Strep pneumonia, haemophilus influenza, little i, and neisseria. Um, and a way to think about this is that uh, it's like a superhero. Um, so, Spider-Man transforms because he gets bitten by an outside source, a uh, radioactive spider, um, and becomes a superhero. So transformation is basically just taking in something environment and adding it to your own self. So think of cyber su Superman transforming. So now we're going to talk about conjugation. Um, and just think about consummation. Um, because it's basically just like bacterial sex. Um, so what happens is there's a bacteria with an F positive plasmid. It's just an extra kind of DNA circle, circle around in the bacteria. And there's an F minus. Um... So think about F, think, just think about, like, fuck, um, is that you had just have, like, uh, a pe this guy has a penis and this person has a vagina. So F plus and F minus, and you want to get that material into the lady bacteria. So you grow a sex pilus, um, and you replicate this F positive plasmid, and it goes all the way through here and replicates. And now this uh, person has that F positive plasmid. Uh, so now this person is F positive, right? And that's one way of getting... Um, the F plasmid over, and this is one type of conjugation. And the second type of conjugation, conjugation involves an HFR cell. Um, so what happens is that you have the plasmid, and it gets incorporated into the bacterial uh, genome. Um, so let's say this is your new bacterial genome, right? Um, so when you're forming a new plasmid, let's say you're forming this, um, it breaks off a little piece of that bacterial DNA, right? And when you incorporate it into another bacteria, you have um, your old DNA, a little bit of that plasmid, and you also have an incorporation of another piece of DNA. So instead of just transferring the plasmid, you transfer the plasmid as well as a little bit of uh, the other bacteria's chromosome. So transposition, uh, think about like a train. Um, and you're moving from place to place, and that's kind of the same theory that applies here. So you have transfer of genetic material from the plasmid to the chromosome, or you could also have the other way around with uh, uh, just of uh, transfer of the chromosome to the plasmid. And you just have DNA jumping around between the plasmid and the chromosome, and you could just have incorporation of that. Um, and it's kind of like the HFR type of conjugation where you have a little bit of the DNA in the plasmid, and this couldn't get transferred over to another bacteria, um, where you have a little plasmid with a little bit of chromosomal DNA, and this can get integrated, and it's just another way for uh, DNA besides the plasmid to get integrated in into another bacterial's DNA. So now I want to talk about transduction, and there's two types. Uh, there's generalized, and there's specialized. Okay, and in generalized, uh, what happens is you have a lytic bacteriophage with a little bit of uh, viral DNA, and it comes in, right? And you have viral replication. See, that's say that's your bacteriophage, and it just breaks up the chromosome, and it integrates some viral DNA into the capsid. But also, one of these broken DNA pieces gets up in there. Um, so you can think about a generalized. Um, lytic bacteriophage transduction just means you break everything up and you replicate as fast as you can because you just want to get out of there. Uh, you're really general. You don't care, but you take like little pieces with you. Um, and think about specialized transduction as in a little viral DNA coming in and it's specialized. Like it's really sneaky and it's like a specialist. So it gets integrated into the bacterial genome and after a while it replicates and there's your, you know, it's kind of weird, but whatever. Um, and there's your virion. So it takes a little bit of the viral DNA along, but also takes a little bit of that 
bacterial chromosome with it, right? And then this bacteriophage goes off and infects some other bacteria and inserts a DNA. Um, same thing with this one. So transduction is just use the use of the bacteriophage to insert uh, DNA into another bacteria. Okay? And an easy way to think about what transduction actually is, is think about just trans, like um, the movement of DNA, like trans, like across, DNA across. Um, and think about transduction, think about the little duct on the bacteriophage. That's kind of an easy way to remember it. There's a little duct here on the bacteriophage. So the movement of DNA across trans, the little duct. Okay. Um, and I also thought of an easy way to remember transposition. Okay. And let's go over here for that. So trans meaning across position. Okay. It's and you can add DNA at the end. So just the movement of DNA across a position. So you have the DNA and the plasmid, and the DNA just moves across. And yeah, so let's talk about the differences. Um, lots of trans and lots of other stuff. Um, let's get that out of there. Okay. So you have transduction, which is movement of DNA across a duct. Transposition, which is the movement of DNA from a plasmid to a DNA genome. And you also have transformation. Transformation, which is little pieces of DNA that get into, uh, they get on the surface of bacteria and are engulfed in, and the, the bacteria is transformed. So think about uh, Spider Man engulfing bacteria and getting transformed, DNA across and transforming it, uh, DNA switching positions, and DNA going through a duct. So interference deals with viruses. Right, And basically you have one human cell infected with two viruses. And basically what happens is that you have one virus uh, controlling the replication and release of another virus. And by controlling, I mean bringing it down. So if you're infected with two viruses, one of those viruses can just uh, kind of wipe the other virus's replication and release out. So that one virus kind of survives. And it's just kind of like uh, an evolutionary mechanism for... Uh, one virus to win over another. So now I want to talk about phenotypic mixing. And there's no exchange of genetic material, but you have two viruses that infect a cell, um, and you get nucleocapsids on the cell surface of two different types, of one cell and another cell. Um, basically what happens is you get outpouching of these virions, um, and randomly they kind of just select different proteins, uh, nucleocapsid proteins on the surface. Um, so then you get just a phenotypic kind of result of both of these virions. So there we go. They both kind of have each other's nucleocaspids. And the important thing about this is that you don't have genetic mixing so that the next uh, generation of these viruses will have their, will have their own uh, nucleocaspid coats. So phenotypic is just phenotype. It's just what you see. It's just on the, It's just surface deep. That's it. So reassortment is kind of the opposite of phenotypic mixing. So reassortment is when you have different segments of viruses. So you have a couple segments to the chromosome for each virus, and two viruses, of course. Um, and you just have crossing over of those segments. Um, so take, for example, influenza. You have a neuraminidase and a hemagglutinin segment. Um, so let's say you have the neuraminidase over here and the hemagglutinin over here. And for the blue virus, you have the hemagglutinin over here and the neuraminidase over here. So you just have two completely new chromosomes for these uh, viruses. And they have the same type of segments um, because you can't have reassortment with, like, different kind of segments. Um, you can't have two uh, neuraminidases in an influenza, but you can have another neuraminidase type or another hemagglutinin type, um, and this determines infectivity. Um, and it's not phenotypic. Uh, because it doesn't just last one generation, this will last the next generation and the next generation after that because it's its chromosomal material. So that's reassortment. So just think of like you're in a cell and you're just sorting out DNA um, and then you reassort it um, to the improper way. Um, and this is helpful in gaining infectivity, especially in the influenza virus. 
So where reassortment dealt with segments, um, think about reassortment just like you just have a big pile of cards and each one of them is a segment of DNA. So you're just sorting them out and then you just reassort them. Recombination is transfer of genetic material across double-stranded DNA chromosomes. So let's say the green cell is infected with two viruses um, and then you transfer over genetic material. So this part's blue and this part's going to be red. Um, and then you just have different... Um, uh, genomic changes in each of these double-stranded DNA viruses. And, of course, unlike phenotypic, which is just surface deep, it doesn't carry on the next generation, um, this deals with uh, second generation and third generation. So these are permanent, these uh, genetic changes. So these will go on to replicate and have the same sort of uh, genetic material for generation to generation to generation until recombination occurs again. Um, these can't deal with reassortment, however, because reassortment only deals with segmented. Recombination deals with dual-stranded... DNA, dual-strand DNA.